Welcome to our review of the deluxe edition of the cooperative word building game Illiterati from Gap Closer Games, who we have to thank for sending us a review copy. Literati was designed by the team of Gary Alka, Rob Chu, and John Kang. Features some rather striking artwork from Audrey Young. This word game was originally funded on Kickstarter back in March of 2022, and now that copies have been shipped to all backers, it's available in retail in both a standard and a deluxe edition. It's the deluxe version that we're reviewing here today. This version of the game includes some aesthetic upgrades, which we will detail later, but no additional rules or in-game content. Now, Literati is a simultaneous play timed game that plays one to five players, with most games taking well under an hour. The more players you add, the longer the game gets. It's listed as age seven plus, and honestly, the age limit for this is going to be based on how big a vocabulary and how good your kid's spelling is. Though, as a cooperative game, parents can certainly help their young ones to some degree. In Illiterati, you, the players, are members of the League of Librarians, who are banded together to save the world's books from the evil Illiterati, a group of elites who wish to keep reading to their own exclusive group, while making the rest of the population illiterate. You do this by collecting letters and grouping them into words and using those words to bind new books. The goal is for each player to bind a set number of books and then, as a team, complete one final chapter. The catch is that you're on a time limit and the illiterati are after you. After each round, any letters not used are burned, and one member of the illiterati will catch up to you, causing the group to discard letters or even whole words. Can you heroes manage to find a final volume before too many books are burned? For a look at the great-looking components and special box you get with the deluxe edition of Illiterati, check out our unboxing on YouTube. There you will see the unique sleeve-style box, mm -hmm. the upgraded screen-printed wooden letter tiles, the two embroidered bags, a jewel-capped hourglass, the dual-layer burn tracker, the five bookmarks, some promo cards for Gap Closer games, and other game rival restaurants, and all of the non-deluxe components, like three sets of oversized cards, red books, blue books, and cards for the illiterati themselves. A really solid box insert that does a great job of keeping these cards in place, and one of the better rule books we've ever read. And my only issue here, which you can see in the unboxing video, is that the deluxe jewel-capped hourglass doesn't work very well. Now, the jewel top and bottom actually have a very small surface area, and it's prone to getting knocked over. But worse than that, even when standing up, we found the sand sometimes gets caught and it stops. Now, this problem comes and goes. Some rounds, it's perfectly fine. Others, you're going to have to give it a little tap on the table. Or perhaps, better yet, just use a timer on someone's mobile device. Now, I'm also slightly concerned about the pull ribbon used to open the box. So far, it's holding up fine, but I always feel like it's taking a lot of force to get that box open. Now, while I had reasonable luck with a firm tap on the table with the hourglass when turning it over, once you don't trust it, it's hard to ever trust it again. But with that, let's move on to an overview of play. So start a game of the Lotterati with all the letter tiles in one bag. Give five out to each player. Then everyone's dealt a red book card. This goes face up in front of them. You then draw three tiles and put them in the center of the table, forming the library. You're then ready to start the first round. Each round in Lotterati starts with the players drawing seven tiles. Yes, even after you already have five. Once everyone has their new tiles, the three-minute timer is started and players start trying to form words out of all their letters. These words can be pretty much anything, must be at least three letters long, and can't be proper nouns unless they fit the theme of the book card in front of the player. Each player can only have a maximum of eight words. Now, while building words, players are free to talk to each other, discuss the words they're working on, and even trade letters and or full words between each other. Players can also freely exchange letters with the library in the center of the table, but need to be aware it can only hold three by the end of the round. The main goal, especially in the first round, is just to make sure to use up all of your letters. Mm -hmm. That's how you stay alive in this game and prevent books from getting burned. Only once you have your words should you start worrying about binding books. 
Now, binding books is the goal of the game. The book card in front of each player lists the requirements for that book to be bound. For the red books, at the start of the game, all you're looking for is at least eight letters worth of words. No, eight letters worth of words, which could be multiple words. You're not looking for one eight-letter long word, though that would count as well. All of these have to fit the same theme. Now, themes include things like animals or things found under the sea or tech and social media companies. In addition, you're going to require at least three of the letters in your binding words to come from the same, I guess we'll call it suit. There are four suits or themes in Literati, which represent different types of book. Drama, conflict, tragedy, and adventure. Mechanically, this means some of the letters, all of the vowels and some of the consonants, come in these suits, which are each represented by a different color and symbol. In addition to this, there are a number of black tiles, which count as any suit. These include two blank wild cards and a number of hard-to-use letters like X, Q, and Z. Once the timer runs out, you first check to make sure everyone has used all their letters. If anyone has extra letters left over once the timer stops, they have to put them in the library at the center of the table. You then check the library to see if it has more than three letter tiles in it. If it does, you failed. The illiterati caught you, and you have to run away. One random letter from the library is burned. Any remaining extras are discarded. If this is your fourth burned letter, the game is over and you have lost. If you didn't have to burn a letter, each player can attempt to bind a book. They discard letters matching their book's requirements and discard the fulfilled book card. When you discard your starter red book, your next book comes from the blue pile, which generally have harder requirements based on grammatical forms and concepts and not word groups. Things like rhyming words, synonyms, antonyms. Now, once you bind a blue book, you must wait until all other players have also bound a blue book. And at that point, the group picks one more book type to bind, either blue or red. One book card is revealed. This is the final chapter. The final book that needs to be bound by every player at once on the same round. If the players manage to do this, they win. Now note, every player has to be able to bind that book at the same time. That is something we messed up on our first couple plays. Once we figured that out, the game got much harder. Now at this point, after you've either burned a book or bound a book, or just managed to survive the round by using all your letters, a member of the Illiterati gets involved. You draw one card from the Illiterati deck and carry out what it says on the card. Now, these are all nasty things that usually make you discard letters from your already formed words, ruining them for the next round. These include things like everyone discarding their smallest word unless the player with the largest word in play discards that. Drawing a tile from the bag and everyone discarding every instance of that letter in play. Or checking how many letters of a specific theme you have and then discarding letters based on that count. The important thing here is none of it is good. To make things even nastier, there are five different illiterati persons in the deck, and each has their own form of punishment. If you ever draw a new illiterati card that matches a person that's already in play, there is a chain effect where the new card takes effect, and then each existing instance of that same illiterati goes off in what is usually a pretty deadly combination. Now, assuming you haven't burned your fourth letter or lost and, and lost or bound the final chapter and won, play moves to the next round. Everyone gets seven new letters, the timer's restarted, and you all start forming words again. The big thing to watch for here is to focus on making sure that everyone has used all of their letters by the end of the round and that no one has accidentally made more than eight words. While bookbinding is the goal of the game and how you win, that can't be at the cost of burning books. When you burn books, not only do you get closer to losing the game, you also don't get a chance to bind books that round. And don't forget, you're adding more literati to the mix, whether you bind books or not. Now, in addition to these basic rules, a literati also comes with rules for solo play and ways to increase the difficulty level. These involve having to bind more than two books before reaching the final chapter, a smaller library, and less allowed to burn books before a loss. There is also an optional win condition where you can't bind the final chapter if there are any letters left in the library. The library's got to be empty so you leave no trace. 
Now this word game, while not easy by any means, does a lot to balance the gaps between different people's word skills. Now we agreed to check out this word game from Gap Closer Games because my family, in my family, my wife Deanna in particular loves word games. My oldest daughter Gwen also has shown a lot of love for them. Now me personally, I'm not a huge fan because the girls always taunt me. So the idea of a cooperative world word game really appealed to me and I was hyped to check out Alliterati and I was not disappointed in the least. Having the ability to help and not hinder your family members, be they more or less verbose than you, is really the shining aspect of this game. Mm. The cooperation around the table was a delight, as while there are other cooperative word games out there, few, if any, let you help each other with the wor your own words in this way. The literati really is not just a good word game, it's also a good cooperative game. And it has a very appealing theme that I think is going to appeal to a lot of non-hobby gamers. Like who doesn't want to become a badass librarian trying to stop fascists and tent on world illiteracy by binding books out of scraps? Like how cool a theme is that? Anything to stop the book burners is something I didn't think I'd have to say in 2023. At its heart, Illiterati is a pretty simple game. It's kind of like cooperative bananagrams. You get a pile of letters and try to form words as quickly as you can. The twist, of course, being that other people can help and you can help other people out. I don't think you could play this game as multiplayer solitaire. I think it'd just be way too hard to use up all the letters that you were dealt randomly every round. To win this game, you are going to have to cooperate. And it's more than just helping spell words. It's easy to lose track and have too many words in front of you or have some spare letters that you thought you were going to use but are going to end up in the library causing you to burn letters. While this can lead to some quarterbacking with people yelling out things like, oh, spell this, or how about you try that, or give me that K, I need it, we always found it to be under control and never overbearing or forceful. In general, the quarterbacking here is more about trying to help out someone who's short on time and not one player trying to lead the others because they know the game better or think they're better at it. Now, one of the good aspects of quarterbacking is helping someone who has a book they simply don't understand or perhaps have misread it and are building words for a different or incorrect concept from yep. what their book requires. Now, I do love the component quality in Arati, Illiterati. Wow, I'm losing the word again. I do love the component quality in Illiterati, and I'm glad they sent us the deluxe edition. I admit it. I don't know if I would enjoy playing this as much with thinner chipboard letter tiles after playing with a nice thick wood version. I also adore the fact the game with game with two bags instead of one of all the silly things. This is something I never really thought of before. And it's something I think I'm going to need to do to all my bag pulling games like Azul. Instead of having to dump all the discarded tiles just onto the table and then having to dump them in the bag when empty, you just discard into the second bag. First one runs out, whoop, switch to the other bag. That's it. I love it. It's amusing how much difference the two bag system makes. Sometimes yeah. it's just the little things. Now, another thing that impressed me here is the price point. The standard edition of this game is only 35 US, 47 Canadian, with the deluxe coming in at only 49 US or 66 Canadian. I gotta say, under 50 US is a great price for what you get in the deluxe edition, and under 35 is just a great price for a modern board game, especially one with chipboard tiles, a box insert, and oversized Dixit size cards. Now, we don't comment often on prices for games, they are what they are. But this one really is kind of shockingly well-priced in the current market. Now, if you're a word game fan, I think Illiterati is a no-brainer. This is just a great modern word game with a cooperative twist. The entire system for staying, staying alive by using all of your letters, combined with the fact you're trying to form words that fit specific categories, is refreshing and feels new. I think that's even more the case if you have kids of suitable ages who enjoy words and language because this is a great family experience. Now, if you're looking for a cooperative game that's not about exploring dungeons, surviving an alien attack, curing diseases, or sinking islands, I think you should give Illiterati a look. It's a unique theme for a cooperative game, and there really aren't a lot of cooperative word games out there. 
The basic mechanics also make this one good for groups of non-gamers, as cooperative Scrabble, where you're trying to defeat the evil Odorati, is a pretty easy sell. The number of books to be bound makes it solid for replayability, yes. even if it had been priced notably higher. Now, what impressed me the most, though, is the fact that this game may just appeal to players who aren't generally big word game fans. Gamers like me. I don't mind your average word game, but they're not my style of game, and it's not something I'm going to go to by choice very often. The thing is, Literati sucked me in with its cool theme and cooperative play. In this game, the fact my wife is a huge book nerd didn't make the game one-sided. It just made the game easier for our entire team. But this game isn't for everyone. In fact, it has two main drawbacks, which can come into play for some groups that you need to be conscientious of. Yeah, a firm grasp of spelling is required to play this game, and it's going to make that alone is going to make it a no go for some players, specifically players with learning disabilities like my daughter. This is also a real time game, and despite it being cooperative, you're on a timer, and that can be an anxiety issue for some players. Due to this, Literati is a game I can never play together with the whole family. Despite Genevieve, my youngest, absolutely loving the theme, this is a game she is just not able to play. Well, that's it for our review of Illiterati, a cooperative word game with a fantastic theme. Do you enjoy word games? What's your favorite? Is it the classic Scrabble or something more modern? Let us know about it in the comments or tell Moa about it at mo at tabletopbellhop.com. Get a better look at Illiterati through my written review, which will be live soon, if it's not up already, over at tabletopbellhop.com.